You're listening to Aviation Marketing Hangar Flying, the community for the best sales and marketing professionals in the aviation industry. You can't learn to fly just from a book. You learn from other pilots who know the tools, the skills, and the territory. Your hosts, John and Paula Williams, are your sales and marketing test pilots. They take the risks for you and share strategies, relevant examples, hacks, and how-tos. Be sure to subscribe on iTunes so you won't miss a thing. Welcome to Aviation Marketing Hangar Flying, Episode 25. Today we're talking with a special guest, Jeff Stadola. Jeff is a member of our Aviation Marketing Masterclass and is the mastermind behind our Advertising Test Flight Program. We are really glad you're here. We're going to be sharing some useful information about how to make your advertisements much more effective, particularly for the aviation industry. So a quick introduction to Jeff Stadola. Jeff was born and raised in the suburbs of Chicago and caught the aviation bug early in life. He went to Purdue University as an aviation professional pilot major while going through the Navy ROTC. After graduation and Navy commissioning, he progressed through the Navy flight school flying the T-34 Turbo Mentor and the T-45 Goshawk where he learned how to land on an aircraft carrier. Uh, He earned his wings of gold in May 2006, moved to Washington State to fly the EA-6B Prowler. After four years flying the Prowler and deployment in support of Operation Enduring Freedom, he transitioned to the EA-18G Growler and completed his naval service as an instructor pilot in the Growler. Since finishing active duty in June 2015, Jeff has continued flying as a reservist in the Navy, founded his business Angel 6 Aviation, and started flying with a major U.S. airline. Angel 6 Aviation is committed to helping aviation companies improve their business through marketing, writing, and consulting, and is pleased to partner with ABCI to meet those goals. Most importantly, Jeff is supported by his loving wife, Jody, and has two wonderful children, Tyler and Annalise. So one of the really interesting things that happened last year is that we met a lot of really interesting people. And one of the really interesting people that we met was Jeff Sedola. And Jeff, we're really glad to have you on the podcast today. We're glad that you're taking the time to, to talk with us. I know you've got a really busy schedule right now. It's great to be here. Thanks a lot for having me. Last August, you were in uh, the military, and uh, you ran across ABCI. Yeah, last year was a busy and crazy year for me. So I got out of uh, the Navy after being a naval aviator for a little over a decade, and I'm lucky enough to still be in the Navy Reserves. And I was also lucky enough last year to get picked up by a major airline who I'm now flying for. That's all some backstory. The uh, amazing coincidence is that my brother is and has been a marketing professional at a uh, very highly regarded company, GKIC, that uh, most of you have probably heard of. And so he was able to meet you, I think, a year or two ago. And then he got me interested in marketing a few years ago. And shortly before I was able to talk with you, he said, hey, I'm in marketing, you're in aviation, and I know this company, ABCI, who's in aviation marketing, so I think we can make this work, and we went from there. Fantastic. I know, we'd been actually in GKIC's Peak Performers Group, and um, you know, we have to say Mike Stadola has been um, an inspiration to us for a really long time. And so, you know, when we heard that he has a brother that's in aviation, we're like, oh, this is so cool. Um, <laughs> so it, it was a really amazing coincidence, some of those really strange things that happened. So um, we didn't really at that time have uh, any plans for working together. But one thing that I offered you is one thing that we have as a standing offer. And that is, if you'd like to write an article for us, um, you know, we'll pay you a little bit for the article, not a heck of a lot, but um, just to see if things work out and uh, to see if if we have any kind of synergy. And you wrote a fantastic article for us in August of last year that we published on our blog uh, that got actually quite a bit of, of good attention. And based on the History Channel's alone TV show, reality show? Yes. Yeah, I was just watching that show. And one day it kind of hit me that, hey, <laughs> the show that's focusing on people making it out in the wild, uh, we can really make some parallels here. So 
kind of for fun, I sat down and wrote up the article and sent it off to you guys uh, just to see see if you'd like it, see what you thought. And uh, as luck would have it, you were looking for an, an article and that kind of filled a gap for you, I think, mm-hmm. and uh, put it on your website. So that was an exciting time for me. That was my first official published uh, article since I've been in college, I think. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, a lot of us get into writing and then get out of it, but it was really yeah. well written. And I, the thing that I liked about it was that it said something so well, you know, that we hadn't been able to communicate as well as you did. And that is most people who are in marketing feel like they are in it all by themselves, you know, and they're out alone in the world against their competitors. And uh, they have to come up with all of the ideas. They have to uh, survive on their own. And, you know, I think you did a really nice job of, of expressing that in a way that we hadn't been able to as articulately. So I'm glad that, that you wrote that. Thanks. I appreciate that. And yeah. the thing I find fascinating about that is you get a lot of people who are great at marketing mm-hmm. and you get a lot of people who are great at their business. Yes. And it's rare to have those two paths cross. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and so being able to, to bring those two things together, I think is the trick that a lot of people and or businesses, uh, really don't even realize. They don't realize that they're great at aviation, but know nothing about marketing or great at marketing, but don't know how to apply it to a specific business or specific sector within that business. Absolutely. Right. And then another thing that, um, that you did fairly shortly after that is we published our um, aviation social media guide and it had some typos in it. <laughs> and <laughs> we realized that you have got really sharp eyes, which is fantastic. In fact, um, I think you sent me an email um, out of the blue that just said, did you know <laughs> <laughs> that you may want to fix some of these things? And that's when I kind of got the idea that, you know, this is a really valuable service. There are a lot of people that know what they should do you know, they know marketing, they know their business, even if they know all of that, um, having a third party look at your stuff, if you've looked at it 47,000 times and you think it's fine, that's because you've looked at it 47,000 times. (laughs) Um, Exactly. Right. Exactly. So, you know, you can pick up on a lot of things that other people don't notice. And I don't know if part of that comes from your aviation background or from your, uh, from, flying fighter jets or, um, you know, if there's a, a, a parallel there? <laughs> uh, yeah, I have no idea um, where that comes from from any, any given person. But I honestly think that's a little bit universal. And the phrase I always use is don't lose the forest for the trees. Mm. And I think everybody does that. I do that. I used to be a schedule writer where we would do 50, 60 flights a day plus simulators and all that. And I would get done with my schedule and I'd been working on it 12 hours a day, and I was proud of it, and then I'd pass it on to someone to review it, and in about 12 seconds, they would just tear it apart. <laughs> and uh, that was always so frustrating for me, but I think that's a good example that whatever you're doing, if you've been working on it a while, it's probably one, really good, because you've been working on it a while, but two, you just need a fresh set of eyes, and if those eyes uh, can know what the end goal is and have that background, it's all the more helpful. Even if it can't, it's still probably going to be helpful. Right, right. Um, Another thing that I thought of, you know, after having that experience with you is one of the things that I had done with GKIC that I thought was incredibly helpful was the thing they call their hot seats. And uh, I was on a hot seat probably two or three years ago with Dan Kennedy and one not too long ago with with Dave D. I don't think I've ever done with Mike Stadola, but, Basically, you present your idea and they tear it to shreds, uh, and it's a horrifying experience. You know, being up in front of a room of <laughs> sounds people. like it. And uh, but it is incredibly valuable. And both times, it really changed the direction of what we were doing in a really productive kind of a way. And nothing else that I have done as a business person has had such a dramatic effect so quickly. So you know, doing something like a virtual hot seat was an idea that I thought that you and I could work together really well on, given your background and and what I saw as a need in the industry. Yeah. And I remember when we first talked about it, the general business term is hot seat or something of that form. 
And uh, in the Navy, we use the term murder board. Right. I remember us, uh, us talking about that. And I always hated that name, murder board, because, well, it, it, it sounds about as terrible as it feels when you're going through it. Um, but it's always, though it's dreadful going into it and it's terrible to go through, it's such a beneficial experience that I didn't want to call something uh, that had such a negative connotation. Right, exactly. Doing it in public, I think, is where the pain comes in. <laughs> Sure. And we, we, do them, we do them in public in our, well, sort of in public in our private group and um, mm. you know, for our masterclass members where we do it for the masterclass. But that is such a supportive and, and warm and helpful group that it is not as painful as it probably could be. But I think people get a lot out of those test flights in our masterclass because we do them, uh, you know, here's the add, you know, the original ad, and then you do a really great checklist with some suggestions and you do it in such a, um, such a helpful way. And I know you and I sometimes have differences of opinion about how we look at those things. And, you know, we say, well, this is good, but this might be better. And we look at things from a very different perspective. So I think that really adds a lot of value for our masterclass members. Absolutely. And uh, they're a lot of fun to do. I enjoy every single one I do. And yeah, it's an extensive process that we've put in place. And the fun thing about it is just like everything else, it's always evolving as, uh, as we learn more throughout the process and more about any given company or person, there's nothing that's universal there within any given strategy. And even within that strategy, like you're saying, what I might like might be completely different than what you might like. And they still might be two great things, and they both might work really well. Uh, and so we can just get the information out there, have people try it. Exactly. And one of the best things about, about it is we focus on having it be measurable, too. Yeah. So if it doesn't work, great. You still learn something, you know, just like the light bulb. All right, that didn't work. Let's move on to the next thing. That'll, that'll make this uh, light bulb turn on here. And so if it doesn't work the first time, not ideal. But it's certainly not a bad thing because you, you at least learned what didn't work and you can move on from there. Absolutely. In fact, one of the lines that I remember most keenly from my first uh, test flight was uh, Dan Kennedy telling me, I don't care what you like. What matters is what works. You know, as I told sure. him something, I used the, the very unwisely used the term, well, I don't like doing this or that or the other thing. And he's just like, well, it doesn't matter what you like. You know, I don't care what you like. <laughs> what matters is, is what works. And I think that's really what this is about is getting another opinion of, you know, maybe you're, and we actually have this happen a lot in these uh, test flights where maybe a company or a person or a person's boss is stuck on a particular turn of phrase or a particular format of an ad that may not be effective for them. So, you know, if we can show them another way, um, that can really open up some possibilities that they'd never considered because they're being held back by their own likes. <laughs> exactly. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, um, so there are some differences between the, the test flights that you do for the masterclass and the test flights that you do as a paid product, which is a co-branded product with ABCI and Angel Six Aviation, which is your company, right? Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the ones that we do for the master class, I we focus on uh, one. Hopefully, it, it being as helpful as possible to the to the person who's doing the test flight. But then, in addition to that, we, I try to make it worth reading on an entertainment uh, value. Otherwise, I, I fully understand everybody's super busy and reading a, a six or seven page. Uh, thing looking at somebody else's ad, it might not draw their attention. So I try to keep their attention throughout. And then secondly, I try to make it specific to that person, but also useful to everybody else so that everyone can learn from it. Now, when we focus on when we do products for the test flight, it's just for your company and your business and you. So uh, we're, we're going to eliminate the fluff unless you specifically ask for it. I, I'm certainly happy to have add that in. Um, but we're really going to focus on uh, the process, what works, um, what we like, what we don't like, and then our recommendations. And 
you know, we'll do it in a write-up, but if I show, say something in that write-up and then it doesn't make sense or you need more information or you need examples um, or anything like that, there can be a little bit of give and take there. And uh, I think that's a great thing because it, it, it's so hard to uh, get across something that can be so detailed and go in so many different directions in one little write-up. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, I think it's, it's really important. And another thing that's really important is that you, uh, the ones that we do as a paid version, those are confidential. So nobody ever sees those except you, I, you and I and the customer, right? Absolutely. So a lot of people, you know, that's their concern about these is, you know, they don't want their, um, their work torn apart in public, which is certainly understandable, right? <laughs> yes. I don't think anybody ever enjoys that. <laughs> True. Well, we do in the master class because we're we're sick. <laughs> we're, uh, you know, in a twisted way. In yes. a twisted sort of way, they're actually really entertaining. And also, I think you know, there's a lot to be said for transparency. You know, showing people here's what we're working on, and you know, here's a better version. So, um, you know, that is really valuable in one way. But having it be confidential, uh, that really gives us a lot more freedom to be very frank, uh, and it also gives the customer. A lot more value because we're preserving their brand integrity and everything else by not releasing anything other than what is perfect. So that's the reason people want these is, is to get their ad as perfect as they can get it and as useful and, and functional as they can get it. Exactly and a lot of places out there uh, focus on making people happy, telling mm -hmm. them what they want to hear, um, staying within the status quo, so on and so forth. The nice thing here is that that's not our focus at all. And what I mean by that is our goal is not and won't ever be to tell you what you want to hear. Our goal right. will be to give our unbridled opinion um, and as be as straightforward and honest as possible. And I think that's the only way that we can really supply a, uh, a great product here is let you know what we think. And along with that, if you like it, great. If you don't, let us know and uh, we'll try to go a different direction um, or we'll realize, hey, maybe it just won't work. But I don't see that being very likely for most people. Absolutely. And, you know, it's interesting because a lot of people will say, well, I can get a second opinion from my brother-in-law or I can get a second opinion from, uh, well, in your case, you can get a second opinion from your brother because <laughs> that would be really useful. But the point is that, you know, it's not a, um, a professional, thorough checklist driven, uh, marketing oriented, uh, second opinion from someone that has seen hundreds and hundreds of ads, uh, in the aviation industry. And, you know, that's something that they can get with, uh, with this product that they can't get, uh, anywhere else that I know of. I don't know of any other company that's doing anything like this. No, I've uh, looked around as much as possible to see if there's anything else out there. Uh, and I haven't found it. And then like we talked about, if you buy this product and afterward you don't think it was worth it, mm -hmm. you'll get your money back. Um, no questions asked. So we guarantee, and I, th I think ABCI guarantees every product. I certainly uh, guarantee everything I'm involved with uh, there. So it, if you buy this product and you don't like anything about it and you don't think it was worth um, what you paid, let us know. We'll get you your money back and then we'll figure out a different way to help you in the future. Absolutely. So, um, and you may say, well, how much money are we talking about? So, so one test flight is $4.99 and you can get a batch of three test flights for $9.99. So if you're running a lot of ads in aviation magazines, you're paying tens of thousands of dollars. Um, and, you know, here for less than $500, um, you can get a really, really thorough evaluation that's going to make those much more effective. And, uh, you know, if you make even uh, one or two more sales in most cases, you're going to more than uh, than make that money back, right? Absolutely. And the way I like to talk about this with people is, yes, it's an additional cost, but just like everything else, think of it as an investment. And that's why we're able to guarantee it. You invest another $500 in your ad, we help you make it better, hopefully lots better. Mm -hmm. And uh, basically we're guaranteeing we're going to get you more customers and we're going to get the customers you do have to buy your product or service uh, more. And it'll make it worth its value, uh, hopefully many times over. Absolutely. All right. So if you'd like to know more um, about 
the method, uh, you know, that uh, that Jeff uses and that we um, we use for the the test flights, you can get a tip sheet of seven things that you need to do before you publish your next ad at abci1.com forward slash seven things. That's abci alpha bravo charlie india number one dot com forward slash seven number seven things. Um, and that has a tip sheet that Jeff has put in t- put together that uh, will really show some of the really useful things that uh, that you include in those test flights and that people can do on their own uh, as well. So even if you're not in the the market where you're publishing those ads in in the big uh, publications and things like that, it is a really good habit to get into to make sure that you are following some of these precepts that aren't used very often in aviation. It's very likely that your competitors aren't, right? Yeah, looking around ads all the time, and most ads are missing most, if not all, of the things that we talk about here. And then once you include them, you'll kind of wonder how you ever had ads without them. Right. That's absolutely true. And the neat thing is, if your competitors are not running good ads, you know, they're running very traditional, what we call brand-oriented ads as opposed to direct response ads, um, they really don't have any way of measuring the response to their ads, so they're spending a lot of money. Um, and if you can do it right, you can really blow the doors off of your competitors because nobody else is doing ads the way that we think they should be done, right? Absolutely. Right. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us, um, Jeff. And uh, we will really look forward to uh, hearing any comments that anyone has to, to offer or any questions that you have. You can respond to uh, the comments on this post on our website. Um, or you can comment on uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, uh, anywhere you like, and we will certainly get back with you, right? Thanks again, Paul. I appreciate it. All right. Have a great afternoon. Thanks for joining us for Aviation Marketing Hangar Flying, the best place to learn what really works in sales and marketing in the aviation industry. Remember to subscribe on iTunes and leave a rating. Oh